We say things that don't mean anything, but thanks for listening. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to We Say Things episode something. I think it's 139. Hello. Sindarin is also here. Why do I have my headset on? <laughs> That's true. I, I have no idea. So He's listening to ASMR in the meantime. Uh, yeah, this is another special episode where we are, in fact, in the same location. And we've, we're actually doing it on Sindarin's computer. Oh. Uh, if everything's fucked up, it's his fault this time. So we could be talking to ourselves for all we know. Uh, but yeah, we, why are we here together? We are here together because we want to. It's a holiday. No, we're here to cast the regional finals of NA, which starts tomorrow. Wow. Incredible. Why so we're in this, Stockholm, Sweden. Why haven't we announced this before? Nobody knows. That's Could right. Be any reason, really. <laughs> Nobody knows. Uh, so let's, before we get started, uh, talk about our beautiful patrons. Yes. Over on patreon.com slash we say things. Thank you to purchasing the In Bruges tier and hope you'll promote my Steam game for play chess available to wishlist now. I have no shame. How many weeks of advertising is he getting? <laughs> this is a pretty good deal, actually. <laughs> it's a pretty good deal. Uh, since Artifact is dead now, I guess it is gaming Artifact now. Pepe Omega Lol. True. Bovalicious, how can I donate more than 30 USD per month to that beautiful man? Suns fan is the question that keeps me up at night. Let's talk about me. Good question as well. Uh, Roundy3, my name is not Armando Perez. It's Mr. 305, Mr. Worldwide. Pitbull. Sounds like lyrics to a song that By Pitbull. I would never want to listen to. Yeah. Games for Falling Asleep thinks Dota could have millions of players if it were properly marketed. Disco Farm D, Vincent Darksey, Hakuna Matata, Commander Donut, Chakar Still, an asshole. Milan Miami, the Mega Pope. Sorry I made you look up churches. It was Sydney thing with ScoMo, TI in New Zealand, and Zan Xavier. And Nate Thicko Zero One Hamscroats wants to shout out God's silliest clown who says hi. Okay. <laughs> Bacon, Shark TM, freshly seasoned goat balls, Dop, nothing to see here, underscore man. Perfect pronunciation from Cinder and half of Belgium speaks French. I actually didn't know that. Ben Broomhead is a Melbourne guy. Sydney is a bit cringe, not gonna lie. We can all agree fuck ScoMo, though. Pitch Black, Wooden Aftertaste, Anonymous, and Peter, 768 bees must visit 2 million flowers and fly 55,000 miles to make one pound of honey evening. Wow. They're underpaid. <clears throat> That's slave labor right yeah, there. Yeah, basically. Goodness gracious. Uh, okay, for the first time in the history of the podcast, you have two things written down. You actually opened this document yeah. sometime in the last week and put two things in that you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked. I've done it before with like one thing. One thing. Maybe I've actually done it with two things once no, before. But no, I have two things this time. The first one is you and I both really like Wordle. We've talked about it on the podcast before. Have you played Absurdal? Have you heard about it? No. Okay, so I haven't briefed you about this beforehand. This is a very authentic podcast. We don't do uh, trial runs or any sort of rehearsals. We barely even show up on time, mostly. Um, oh, God. I, okay. It's not sponsored, by the way, but you uh, wish. It could be. One you day. wish. Um, so there's this version of Wordle called Absurdal. And basically the way it works is like regular Wordle, but the game itself will make it as hard as possible for you. So every time you put in a word, it will make it as incorrect as possible for as long as it possibly can. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't know. What so you like, mean. let's say, let's say you start out with your starting word. Of course. hundred percent chance you get zero letters, right? Because in its entire directory, the library of words, it can find a word that has none of your letters. So it will choose a new one. And then you've limited five letters. And oh. Then you try again. So okay. it will like constantly narrow down and make it as hard as possible for you to guess. The theoretical bottom limit of guessing the word is four. I've got it in five. So I'm curious if you try it, if you can get it done. We're not going to do it live here right now, but you guys can try it. So it's called absurd. Isn't there just, so it's not the same word. Obviously, it's just, the, so it's just based off your answers. Always. So there's going to be a mathematical best. Yes. 
and the mathematical okay. best is four. And I haven't found the way to do it. I've got it in five. Okay. Um, I see. So obviously you want to try to use starting words that eliminate a lot of letters that are in a shitload of words, right? Yeah. And then try to make it as obscure as possible really fast. Mm -hmm. thought it was a pretty fun little thing that you could try if you wanted to. Second thing on my list today, and just moving into the frame, I think it's really funny. Um, Nio 2. You're not really a, uh, a Souls type game player or Souls born or whatever, but... Um, the original Nio, I don't remember when it came out, if it was last year or two years ago, I never played that. Uh, but I've been playing Nio 2, which came out last year. So probably Nio 1 was at least two years ago, actually. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's a really good game. I don't think, <clears throat> if you don't play Dark Souls or those games, I don't know if it's for you, but I can definitely recommend this game. Uh, the combat system is really fun. It's very, it's very rewarding to fight. It has like the exploration elements similar to Dark Souls, but instead of being, instead of being one world that's tied together, it's more level based. You play like different missions and complete them and get stronger and get new abilities, get new combat arts so that you can fight. Um, which one's Dark Souls again? What do you mean? Which one is Dark Souls? I get this game and mm -hmm. another one that starts with a D confused. Maybe it doesn't start with a D. <laughs> there, <laughs> there's a game company that has a convention in like Australia or New Zealand and it's a big game. It's like a Diablo type. Is that Dark Souls or is that a different one? Dark Souls is not a Diablo type game. Okay, so it's another game that I'm thinking okay. of. Might not even start with D. Dark Souls is basically known as a game that is very difficult to complete. You're playing a character that needs to fight through a world and collect souls to level up and get stronger. And it has really like unique and difficult boss fights and level design that's very much very challenging on the first playthrough generally. Um, if you've never played any of them before, you still need to play those. I, I, I don't know if you'll enjoy it, but you have to do it. I it's have kind, to. It's kind of a rite of passage, like listening to basketball every second week. How's that a rite of passage? I apparently have to go you know, through it all the this time. This is actually really bad luck. We're not going to extend this into an NBA conversation, but I actually have I had to turn on a VPN to be able to watch the Suns while I'm here. I just watched their last game before the All-Star break, so actually not playing the entirety of the time that we're together. That's really unfortunate. So you don't get to watch it, oh. uh, which you know is very sad. But sucks. the All-Star game is coming up, so oh. maybe, maybe I'll get somebody else to watch it with me. Yes, exactly. We did go out for sushi, though, which was really nice. You tried oh. a lot of different fish. In the famous words of Sun's fan, it all tastes like water, but you liked eel. And so, you loved the other dish we had with beef. So generally speaking, I'm not into fish. Uh, haven't given it that many tries, obviously. I, I know I don't like crab, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I'm not... A, I mean, shrimp is kind of eh. So not, I typically stay away from it. And then anytime there's anything that smells or tastes fishy, which has been like my entire experience with fish, mm -hmm. I don't like. But sushi rolls are okay. I don't like them as a meal because it just feels like a snack, but we did go to a place that had such things, a huge platter. I actually posted a video of you eating a baby on there. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, all, a lot of it tastes like nothing to me, like gen, genuinely. Mm -hmm. But you did allow me to order a beef dish, which was amazing. Thank you. I forgot what it's called, but you really liked that. Oh, God. Still um, thinking about it. Very, very nice. But yeah, it was cool that you tried a lot of the stuff. You refused to try to eat the baby that's the octopus. One. Yeah, that's the only thing I didn't try. Uh, so I got two of those, which was great. One of them is uh, immortalized online now on Twitter. Thanks for that. Or on Instagram or both. Are you, you naming it? it? Uh, no, then it's then we're personifying it, and that makes it disturbing. Okay. It, was, it was just a baby, a, a dead baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> baby dead octopus? Baby jokes. Um, <laughs> But no, I, I find that interesting because like, I think a lot of the time when people eat sushi for the first time or a lot of fish, it's kind of similar. But I would say over time. You were convinced that, well, what, was it salmon that I was mm -hmm. eating? Like, everybody loves salmon. I yeah. eat it. It's like, this doesn't taste like anything. The salmon's really. great. There's just like this slight taste. It wasn't bad. Like, I think only one of the things I had I didn't like because of the texture was just awful. Yeah, I don't know which one that was, actually. But the I'm genuinely surprised I liked eel. And you said that the eel typically does taste like that. It's so really I actually might very, try very it nice. more. I mean, I will because it was actually good. So yeah. happy about that. And now you have no excuse not to take Nikki out for sushi if you know they have uh, a place no. that has this beef. No, 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 no. Don't watch this. That beef. Don't mm. watch this. Just, well, you're going to have to find out what that beef was called. Yeah, so. I will. It, it was a four. I think it was an eight letter with, and it started with T. This isn't Wordle, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Wordle. All right. Uh, okay, so let's get started with uh, the actual episode, shall we? Yes. Uh, so first things first, ESL has announced 
a could you please bring it up on the screen? This is your responsibility, not mine. A major. A major. What am I bringing up? The tweet. I wanted to read. Oh my god. So all right. So I have. I, I can't believe you forgot this. This was actually like the only thing we were testing. So Shannon has the tweet open as well. For some goddamn reason, Twitter just doesn't work for me right now. It isn't loading shit. I have restarted my computer. I've deleted my entire cache. Locked in in two different browsers. It just isn't loading tweets. It works on your phone though. Yeah, it works on my phone on the same account. It's like super weird. So on the PC right now, we can't see tweets. So we're going to be reading it off your phone <laughs> for some reason. ESL tweeted the other day. <laughs> Rebirth. The ESL1 Stockholm major joined the first Dota 2 major with a crowd since 2020. It'll be May 20th to the 22nd. Tickets are out Thursday. Which, is it Thursday today? It's out today then, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, very cool. So they get the second major. First major went to nobody. Uh, luck of the draw on that one, I think. And we'll see who gets the third one. But uh, exciting stuff. I mean, we've been in Sweden quite a bit, so if we get invited, we'll be... <laughs> feel like Go we'll, back here for the third time. We'll be in Sweden many times, it seems, yeah. if that were to happen. I am obviously, from my bias perspective, I'm really happy to get a major in Scandinavia. It's really easy and nearby for me. I think it's... Sweden has always been one of the countries at like the forefront of esports, which is also why it was such a... Honestly... A lot of Sweden got a shitload of flack for canceling TI right in in the location or for yeah for refusing to run it. Um, I was really genuinely surprised. I thought if a country wouldn't cancel it, it would be Sweden, but they did. So, uh, but now the major is back here. Hold on, hold on. So, am I not remembering this right? Did they they didn't cancel it? Cancel it? They just something. Why do I not remember the details? So so it was announced that it was going to be in Stockholm at last TI right? Yeah, and then. There was this video with the yeah the mayor yeah. mayor blah, blah blah talking about Stockholm but welcoming people here and then it was something about along the lines of Sweden refused during COVID to give an athlete visa right. to esports athletes because they didn't consider them athletes mm-hmm. and then two weeks later they backpedaled on that and that's why the CSGO major got to be in Stockholm okay. but TI had already moved away so technically they didn't cancel it they just didn't accommodate for people they to travel it. in, which is basically equivalent right. to canceling. Okay. Right? Because a lot of people yeah, yeah, couldn't yeah. come in. Okay. So. so they just refused to to bring in people. So we could have maybe had TI with like three teams in Sweden. Uh, Pretty good odds. Yeah. They had some money there. Might have had crowd, though. The could Talent have though. made up uh, the rest of the, oh. the teams? I mean, I would play with you for fourth place. That's Thank you. Pretty good. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's pretty good. I, I'll, I'll power through that. So, yeah, ESL is going to get the second major. It's pretty hype. A uh, big event with, we assume, unless, <laughs> not the jinx stuff, unless something it's shit hits the away. fan. Yeah, anything can happen, of it's course. It's hard to imagine COVID is worse than now in three months, right? If yeah. it gets bad again, it's probably next winter. Yeah, the win- winter be. time is going to be, it's going to be like that every year, it feels like. Yeah. But I also think that there's pressure on Valve to follow through. This, I don't think COVID will be an excuse anymore. That's definitely plenty of prior experience and planning time now. So not only that, but if like comparing to games even within their own IP, Counter Strike. Right. They're running. There, there's no excuse anymore. Yeah. Right. So this is going to be pretty hype. Uh, if I'm not inviting, invited as talent, then I will genuinely consider attending as just a spectator because it's been such a long time. Yeah. And it's crowd. it's a three day main event in the arena, and the pre arena is I believe also going to be played locally. I would mm-hmm. imagine. So it's probably like if the prior or previous majors from last season or anything to go by, the whole major is probably going to last about a week. Right. And the playoffs in the arena will be what would that be then? The top six or eight teams, maybe top eight, are remaining with three days. I think top eight is probably doable. So that also means, unfortunately, obviously, that's kind of a consequence of that is that not all the teams get to play on stage uh, yeah which there's like varied opinions about um it's what it's something they with the exception of the two absolute bottom teams at ti they removed that uh all 16 teams get to play on stage at least once yeah i i see for majors i can it's more understandable mm-hmm. to not have that ti i feel like you just have every team yeah. play at least one series uh not that i don't trust you can we make sure that this is recording still? it is i just checked how did you just check without me seeing? I don't know. You were probably looking at your phone. You do that a lot in social settings, I've noticed. 
Okay, so moving on to okay. another LAN that was announced. Do I need to bring this up on my phone as well? Yes, please, by all means. Doing that right now? because It's like the weirdest bug I've ever seen. Okay, it's loading. Oh, why is it not Let's... working? Uh, Nigma Galaxy tweeted out, LANs are making a comeback. They also use the lit uh, emoji. Emote. Very important. Yeah, that ESL uses as well, except ESL used two, oh. just FYI. We're happy to announce that we're finally getting the chance to watch the Habibi squad versus the SCA squad at the Gamers Galaxy Dota 2 Invitational in Dubai. It's going to be <clears throat> a million AED, which I think it was 200 something. $270,000. USD? Roughly. Yeah. So a quarter million. And I, I know that Secret is involved as well. I'm trying to remember the other. I didn't actually bring this up on my phone. I think the entire team list is a mess. <coughs> I'm going to see if I can find that on a different page. <laughs> oh, you. no, the Reddit post links to Twitter, so that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> let's see if it's in the comments. Yeah, we'll be fine. Does it link to Liquipedia? Why don't you just open Liquipedia? Yeah, let's do that. We'll, we'll do it live. Yeah. Screw it, we'll do it live. Shout out to that one racist guy that used to say that all the time. I can't remember his name anymore. Yeah. Uh. Just some American guy. Uh, okay, so this should be upcoming. Have they not made the page for it yet? God, I love doing stuff like this. All right, live. anyway, so the LAN will be in Dubai, which is kind of bittersweet, for me at least. I love seeing LANs in the Middle East, but then obviously there's issues with Dubai. I mean, we've talked about this before with like civil rights, not civil rights, well, any rights really. Uh, when it comes to specific countries, but we kind of came to the agreement that it's kind of a necessary evil, as it were, where it doesn't, like any country, there's going to be something pretty much. To an extent. China, Middle East, even the U.S., you can make arguments towards. Mm. There's not really many exceptions. Go Denmark. Denmark, I'm sure that we can, can come up with something. We made, a make... we made a drawing in a newspaper once. Oh, yeah, that's true. I remember that one. <laughs> the highlight of our national heritage. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be this I, is a third-party tournament. It's not an actual major, obviously, so it's great to see third-party tournaments back at it. This is going to be in March. I know what I'm going to You're going to look it up on your phone? I'm going to go on Reddit and open the tweet oh, on my phone. That's good. Oh, you have a weird Reddit app as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's actually really nice. looks weird. It's called Relay. Hmm. It loads weird. Sponsor the podcast, please, Relay. Okay, somebody... Here we go. The announced teams are loading. Boom there Esports. So it's Boom, Fnatic, Nigma Galaxy, Nigma Galaxy SEA. So they have two teams in it. That's pretty rigged. OG, Team Secret, Team Spirit, Team Solo Mid, Tundra, which we'll get back to, and Virtus Pro. So pretty, pretty stacked lineup uh, for this tournament playing for about a quarter mil. Um, that's exciting stuff. And, you know, getting lines back is, is nice. The whole concern about the, the region, etc. doesn't seem to be dissuading the teams. I don't know what, what part of it is exactly going to be on LAN. If all the teams are there. Um, well, I would assume all the teams are there. Or if it's, yeah, it's just announced as a LAN. So we're, I don't, I don't know enough about like the COVID limitations and everything. But we're, we're assuming that all 10 well, teams will be present. It's the Middle East. So there's not <laughs> going to be much, probably. At least in my experience. You know more about that than I do. Uh, but yeah, uh, it should be pretty hype. So we're starting to see lands again. That's, That's very nice. Very exciting. Uh, hopefully everybody is very you know, responsible and whatnot. But, I mean, they're the ones organizing as well, which is kind of strange, right? So they're kind of branching out a bit, it feels like. Um, yeah. Enigma Galaxy and whatnot. Because they have, I mean, they've branched out to other games as well. So pretty cool to see. And any time we can get some representation from the Middle East, I am obviously very for that. It's good to see. Okay, let's move on to roster shuffles. As All right, Twitter just broke on my phone as well now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cinderin's going to have a mouth. Oh, my God, what's going on? Cinderin was raging before then. And by raging, I mean he was getting visibly upset, which to me is Cinderin rage. You haven't watched my stream that much, I think. If there's something that triggers me really hard and gets me frustrated, it's when technology doesn't work. I don't know. It's just like... There's the boomer. My goddamn phone doesn't... <laughs> It, it, load up just, that Twitter. I just, yeah, exactly. The Thank tweet, you. the tweet app I got here doesn't load. The bird, the image bird doesn't do anything. <laughs> the blue birdie. Uh, okay, so Gabby for T one. So he's yeah. not officially on the roster. I think he is. Wait, they actually announced him. Unless I misunderstood it. 
Okay. They, they've been they've here. been all right. They've been a little bit ambiguous about this yeah. whole thing with Ana, etc. But at least he's announced as the fifth player for their upcoming tournament. Okay. Right. Uh, I don't know if they've made a full official announcement. You're, you're making me question myself. We'll talk so. about the results in a in a couple minutes as well. Yeah. But uh, they've done well with him so far. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I actually see. This is this is where it would be great if I could just you know <laughs> use my phone and just confirm my suspicions. Yeah, but, I can use my American-made phone yeah, here. Yeah. Use, use your superior phone. Uh, what uh, am I looking up exactly? I, I believe the way T1 announced it was that he was in. I think he's been added to the official roster, but they haven't made like an unless I'm mistaken here, they haven't made like a traditional uh, roster announcement of it. Uh, but I do believe he is listed as one of the five players. So you don't, you're point. saying they haven't tweeted anything uh, regarding this? Not in the usual way. I think like a full announcement. I think they've only announced that he is playing with them for the tournament. So maybe it's like still somewhat trial okay. uh, thing, but. Yeah, at least our speculation about Anna did not happen this time around. Maybe he was trying them out, out with them in scrims and it didn't work the way they wanted. They ended right. up going for Gabby for this tournament. And based on how things looked and how they went, they they will probably continue with him. So um, that's the lookout for T1 right now, at least. Uh, we will see going forward. Or we will also see if we get corrected entirely in the comments and people are like, there was an official announcement, you just totally missed it. That would definitely be a possibility. <sighs> this is a scuffed episode. When Twitter doesn't work, you can't find things. That's just how it is. Man, so. tech not... When social media doesn't work, the world mm. falls apart. And when it does work, the world falls apart. What do you think the common denominator is? I think people just suck. Humans. Yes. You're right, robot. Animals don't use Twitter. That I mean, that is accurate. We they make get, they the, get eaten like baby octopi. Octopi, octopuses as well. I think is correct. Is it? It probably is. I don't know actually. So cactus, cacti, cacti cactuses. Can you say that? Is correct. You can say cactus. It's actually more. More correct. Common. <laughs> that it's more. Cacti makes you sound like an idiot. Because that's a common misconception. Because you think you're smart. It's like a, I'm very smart moment. Mm. But when you live with cactuses, you can call them that. Anyway. What about the plural of circus? <laughs> Circa. <laughs> circuses? I actually don't know. It's probably circuses. Why wouldn't it be circuses? What else would it be? Circi. Cir I don't know. That makes you sound like an idiot. Yeah. A really smart idiot. So next roster, I mean, that wasn't really a roster shuffle necessarily, but uh, we do have some news about Tundra. This one's very fresh off the press. Yeah, they tweeted this as far as we're concerned a couple hours ago. But I'll you take guys, your word for it. What does your right, bird app before say? I, before I get into this, okay. their announcement, they, they posted a picture of the announcement. Okay, mm -hmm. It's not like they wrote it. Can you tell me, is this not the worst font you've ever seen? It's like... You can barely read it. Just horrible font choice. Ahead of the DPC Tour 2, we have decided to make a roster change. Am I wrong? This is terrible font. Am it's I wrong just, or not? It's just funny seeing you try to read it. <laughs> you call me a boomer, you're holding the right. phone like... I'm going to show this. Not that you guys can really see it very well. Maybe you can... Uh, oh, that's not a <laughs> clue. This is a terrible font to use. It's barely legible. Uh, where was I? We can confirm that Fata will be leaving Tundra. He's been an important part of Tundra, helping us to create the team this and guiding us camera. through our first year in competitive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're not going to finish reading this because apparently I look like a goddamn idiot. But it's great. I will <clears throat> read Fata's tweet. Oh, he actually tweeted a lot more since then. My goodness, this actually. Oh, did he delete his tweet? Oh, there it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have been kicked from Tundra. I go chill. Then he tweeted, player's decision. There's been previous attempts from players to kick different player for the same reason replacing me. For the same player replacing me. For the same player. Oh, I declined those. So I'm not sure what to take from this. I'm not perfect, but I can honestly say I fought for the constant improvement of this team. For now, I'll probably take a break from the competitive scene since I don't have the energy to start up from zero again. I might stream or upload some random music. Not sure yet. So obviously sad for Fata because I know he yeah. works really hard. And he got kind of a, I want to say a bad rap. I mean, you played with him way mm -hmm. back when. He was not a great teammate back then, but I know that he's improved a lot. I don't yep. know if you've heard the same thing. Yep, exactly. So sad to see that he has been kicked. And it was just one, like we'll talk about the results soon, but it was one bad result. So obviously there's something deep down, you know. Yeah, the thing that's interesting tweet. here about the thing that he tweeted was there's been previous attempts from players to kick different player for the same player replacing me. 
So whoever is replacing him, other people in the team have been trying to replace other players in order to get in while keeping Fata. Right. And now ultimately they are taking him out of the equation, which makes you wonder Who what kind of player would can replace Fata, but who could also replace someone else in that team that was attempted to. And how does that player feel about knowing that they were attempted to be kicked? <clears throat> Which I assume, you know, yeah, will come true. to light. So this seems... Honestly, this makes Tundra's <clears throat> team seem a little bit fragile and yeah. chaotic right now. If they're you're kicking one player, you try to kick someone else, which Fata declined to do. Um... Maybe they're bringing in a new guy, and then that new guy will immediately agree to kick the guy they wanted to kick in the past. So the Eternal Envy route. Mm, yes. Maybe it is Eternal Envy. Uh, I actually had a thought, and we talked about this previously, but based on his recent tweet, this doesn't sound likely, but the player that technically makes the most sense is Fly. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, is by far the best free... Uh, I mean, Soxa would be the best free agent Soxa, mechanically. Yeah, because that's the thing. Would you but, have kicked someone for Fly that wasn't Fata? That's what I mean. So... Like, fly, he's played position three, but you're not going to kick somebody, that's, especially a team that's already mm -hmm. successful for somebody that hasn't really played that position. But as a captain, he would have very valuable experience that not, like, basically nobody, can, other than, like, three or four people, can say that they have the same resume as, as fly. But if it's other positions, then it has to be somebody that's more flexible, which Soxa could be. Yeah. He's the five or four. Who's not really a captain, captain type, though. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. Um. Maybe they're going to have someone like 33 take more of a leadership role. Weeha. We is a possibility. Weeha has, I mean, when he was trying out, or he was playing a lot of position five recently. Okay. On stream. I think Soxa is more likely, but maybe. I also think Soxa and 33. Is Tundra uh, sponsored by a betting company? Um, Would you like to look at their tweets? To yes. See? Please check on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I got this new thing where... Uh, I have a zipper on my oh, pants, so it's actually kind of a nice. pain to go in there. But it's good for travel. I have so. a zipper on the front of my pants. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully you don't use that too often in public. I put my phone there all the time. Okay. Uh, Maybe that's Tundra why I put pants from Twitter. This is the most scuffed episode. I, <laughs> I mean, I like it. What can I say? I also think our camera shots are amazing. Like, if you look at them sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I need to sit up more. At so least, at least the, the coffee machine in this apartment is very, very well-framed here. If they want to sponsor us, what brand is that? Severin. If you want to sponsor the episode. Severin? Uh, yeah, apparently. Sounds like a Harry Potter yep. coffee machine. It teaches... Uh, Severus Snape? The Black Arts. Okay, would it, the show dark their, arts. would it show their sponsors on the Liquipedia? Don't think so. Yeah, let's oh, go nice. You got an ad for Chevrolet. Uh, we do have sponsorship <laughs> strip slots here at Chevrolet. <clears throat> if you're interested. Uh, that... Okay, Tundra Esport Singular. .com. Maybe some speculation as well. The coach AUI could he play? That is an option. True. Yeah. All right. It's really hard to find. I mean, if I'm Tundra sponsors, I'd be a little miffed that you know it's pretty hard to find what their sponsors are on their website. Hmm. By the way, what is up with this? Accept cookies everywhere. Okay, here we go. Is that? That's Kappa. What? Kappa. What is Kappa? It's a clothing brand. It's called Kappa. I literally thought that was the logo for Pornhub. No. I could see why you might think that, but no, it's the logo <laughs> for Kappa. I'm going to Google this, which does work. There it you're is. Incognito. It's the Kappa Careful. logo. Oh, you're right. It's I'd, a clothing brand. I I'm gonna sound like an idiot. I'd never even heard it's of that. It's a man and a woman leaning against each other. Yeah, I thought it was Pornhub. Okay, so. That would be uh, a. Pr I they, mean, I'm sure Weha would be all over the team then. <laughs> Get that free premium. They they don't have a betting sponsor. We've <laughs> we've looked it up live, uh, verified via sources. My Pixel Six uh, is uh, is porn haram. That probably yeah. Okay. I think it's blessed by a lot of people. Absolutely. Uh, all, right. <laughs> all right, it's Weha. <laughs> all right, you heard it here first, guys. Via sources, we. It's probably we are socks are most likely a y a potential dark horse for the position, but I don't know if he wants to play professionally anymore. Right. Uh, and I think Fly makes a lot of sense. So. He does, As but he doesn't make sense with Fata's statement. That's the Correct. Thing. It doesn't really check out, so. Okay. All right. Let's go over the DPC finals results from last week, and hopefully you can remind me what the hell we predicted, because yep. I don't remember. So for the SEA region, Boom ends up taking first, 
against T1. We got second, and then third was SMG, followed by Fnatic getting last Fnatic place. And fourth, yeah. I think, I think I predicted them in order of how they placed in the division. So I picked Boom to win. I think Fnatic second, T1 third, and SMG fourth. And you picked T1 to win against Boom, I think. Yeah, I thought. So we both good. got the finalists, so right? T1 did beat Boom in the <clears> upper <throat> bracket, and yeah. they did the reverse thing again. But I thought that, yeah. I remember saying Gabby, I thought would be like this wild card, which would work out for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, T1 lost or T1 beat Boom two to one, and then in the finals they lost three to one, uh, the other way around. So clearly showing to be the two strongest teams in this competition for SEA. Um, yeah, Fnatic getting last maybe a little bit surprising. You look at the names, really strong names on the roster, but not their best tournament. Uh, SMG, most notably, most notable and remem memorable names here for most people will probably be Mid One Moon and Afu playing for SMG there. Uh, Fnatic having Raven, Armel, Jabs, and DJ. Uh, Janual is probably the least, or definitely the least known name in this roster playing position five. But, you know, <clears throat> great look for Boom again, right? They won the they won the division. They go to the regional finals. They, they drop the ball one time. One series, they lose by one game. The rest was pretty dominant, 2-0 and 3-1. So <clears throat> just the best team in SEA right now. Uh, really cool to see. And I'm happy for Tim's. He seems like such a likable guy. Um, yep, he is. Great job. <clears throat> maybe, he, maybe, he, maybe he isn't in a team environment. Maybe he's a toxic asshole. But I haven't seen that side of him. So he benefit looks, of the doubt always. He looks cuddly. He, he looks like a nice guy. Um, All right, and so. I've been a huge fan of Yopage on mid. I think that guy is a superstar. So Okay. okay that, was, uh, that was SEA. Uh, we had two more regions conclude. The next one was South America. I think we both picked the correct winner here. Did we? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, I did say when, when push comes to shove and it becomes more important and there's more in the line, my favorite one in this region will always be Beast Coast. Uh -huh. uh, they crushed. They got 3-0 in the finals. They dropped one game to Thunder Awaken in the upper bracket final. The rest was 2-0 and 3-0. Um, but they won the finals. Actually, against Infamous, getting second was really not something I was expecting. Uh, they ended up 2-0-ing Thunder Awaken <clears throat> for the final spot. And in fourth place, no big surprise, Likely the most weak team here in this tournament. Do get fourth. It's Apu, King of Kings. Um, is it? May, maybe you picked Thunder Awaken to win. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Did you say? Is it actually Apu? Or APU? I don't know. There's no way it's Apu. It's probably APU. <laughs> you said it with such confidence that I believed you for a moment. I don't... Is that... What's Apu? Is that, is that the monkey in Aladdin? Uh, it might, it's all, I think it's Simpsons as well. Oh, the, it's the store owner? Yeah, the store owner. Yeah. So it's definitely a poo. King of Kings. <laughs> APU. I don't know what it stands for. I have APU, to. APU. Automatic uh, Pornography Undertaker. Everything's just about porn today, huh? Yeah, Another team that could really, pick up Weehaw. <laughs> really got it on the mind here. All right, next. Uh, Western Europe. So the big boys on campus. Uh, we got this one as wrong as you could... Almost. almost as wrong as you can get it, which... We did predict, to be fair... That we would be wrong. That we'd be horribly wrong. Did we? And we were really off. So both of us took Tundra to win. They got last. Yep. Oops. Uh, both of us said Gladiators would get last. Yep. Team Tickles. They got first. They won the whole thing. Uh, OG, we did get correct at third. And Liquid... We also got correct. We also got it. correct. So we had the top and bottom flip, basically. Which is very wrong, if you think about it's it. very wrong. Um... In a four-team tournament. But yeah, Gladiators looked amazing. They they did get 2-0'd by Liquid in the upper bracket final, but they got sweet revenge. 3-1 three, three in the grand finals. They 2-0'd OG. Liquid got a lot of criticism about drafting from the community here. I think a lot of the time the community will just look at, you know, individual drafting sequences and be like, how do you give these heroes away time and time again? Um, they lost twice in a row to basically the same strategy with IO Storm. But, you know, it's... It's the eternal discussion that we always have with this kind of stuff, right? You can be stubborn in a positive way and stubborn in a negative way. Like, you can be like, okay, we know why we lost that game. It wasn't the IO Storm. You give them the strategy again, try to counter it. You lost again. Maybe then you realize, okay, this is a big problem, but then it was too late. Then they had lost the finals, yeah, right? Serious um, over. It was a similar story with um, the Grand Finals of TI this year, right? You had, uh, or, well, last year at this point. Um, Magnus. You, you had the Magnus being given away in the final game, but you also had LGD rating IO really high, right? Like they first picked IO two games in a row and got crushed. And then mm -hmm. they're like, okay, 
switched it up, won two games relatively easily, especially one of them. And they did get like and tiny, if I'm not mistaken. They got one of their best strategies in the final game, uh, which, you know, that's a good example of being stubborn in a positive way, if you want if stubborn is the right word. But you literally, as Spirit gave them perhaps their best strategy of the whole tournament, and then you beat it in the final game. Yeah. So there's always, if you do that and pull it off, you're heroes, you're a champion, right? And if you don't, you, that's just, you, you just can't win when you do that, right? Like, if you lose the game, people are always going to blame, wow, you gave them their best strategy. And if you do win, you're like, they're like, holy shit, you're a genius. So it's just a high risk thing. Um, but overall, I'd say, you know, very impressed with Gladiators. I'm very curious how they're going to be looking into the, the future season here. Obviously, my expectations to the team have gone up significantly after this. I did not think they were going to be able to pull this off. Uh, so they look like a real top contender in Europe now. Uh, and Liquid still look like the best other team once again. So, um, yeah. And with Tundra, I mean, Tundra has looked really good previously. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to get a potential upgrade. We'll see. They're very hot and cold as a team. The reason I picked them to win was that they were looking hot going in. They have these like insane high highs and then they just have low lows that mm. are... That, that's a really volatile team and a team that's going to struggle to win big championships is if your bottom level is lower than that of all the others, even though your top level is higher. Like if the stars align, which it has for this team, they can win championships. Uh, but... It seems like the amount of things that can go wrong is relatively limited because once they start hitting a downward spiral, it kind of seems to just crash and burn quite a bit. Uh, they won one game this tournament in the in the playoffs. They got two out by Gladiators and then two one by OG. So they didn't really get to show very much uh, success compared to what they can. But at the same time, let's. What would you rather do? Like, let's say you could be a team that's consistently placing third, or you could be a team that is sometimes placing eighth and sometimes placing first. Third. Would you, rather, you would rather be consistent well, third. Like Cloud9, I like, thought, was one of the... Let's say you're always third. The, like, Cloud9 was one of the most successful teams of all time. They got second all the time. Second all... That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Third. Every tournament? Yes. Mm -hmm. 100%. If you could get first every third tournament and eighth the other two. Kind of shitty ass. Don't questions. think about the prize money. <laughs> Don't think about the prize money. Let's say you win nothing except the glory. What would you rather have? First and then eighth twice? Yeah. And it just rotates. Yeah. Or third three times in a row. I think most players would choose the championship. Even I'm, if you I'm said not the no. player though. Right. I'm the team owner. I would say third. Okay. Still. Fair enough. Yeah. But that's that to me is I mean it's still a small sample size. But you think about how Tundra has looked so far. They've won. They won a big tournament. <clears throat> then they hit a slump. Then they looked really good in the in the playoffs leading into this. Week passes by, straight down again. So yeah, pretty volatile it seems. Um, Indeed, just didn't show up with their best strategy and play this time around, unfortunately. All right, <clears throat> that leads us into what we will be covering. One of the three regions remaining is NA. Uh, we'll be talking about that soon. First, we're going to talk about China. There's three regions here. NA will be the last we we cover. Uh, predictions here. The four teams are PSG, LGD, Aster, RNG, and Ehome. I think we have talked about our predictions, right? We predicted in all four of them. We said we would have Ehome last. No. Right? What? Why would Am we I talk mixing, about these? Maybe I'm mixing this up with a podcast. I did. You're doing another podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I've talked about this on... I'm uh, almost positive we did not talk I've about talked about this. this on TLDR. That's why. Uh, the ESL podcast, which... Trying to compete with us, ESL? That's fine because I'll be on the episode tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so fight me or pay me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. So I I would take uh, LGD for sure. I yeah. think this is an easy first place. Uh, I'm gonna go with RNG second though. Aster third. Yep. Ehome last. I think it was something similar for me. So Ehome to me, it's really cool that they're in this top four. These are players that you've never heard of before for the most part. Uh, I made a joke about this on the other podcast that the total combined prize earnings of these five players is lower than mine. Yeah, so I was very, on that episode with you. So you were there. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I'm the one that made that joke, not you. I think I did. Maybe you did. <sighs> if, you, if you think it's funny, it came from me. I think I'm, uh, Yeah, I probably made You're it. not self-deprecating. I make fun of you. I do it for you. You make fun of everyone, including yourself, yeah. which makes it more balanced. So that's good. That's true. I'm fat. Yeah, so I th that is good. Yes, absolutely. Eat some more sushi. Uh, so yeah, PSG LGD, I agree, first place, most likely. Uh, Aster and RNG, I would probably pick RNG as well. I'm a big, uh, big fan of Somnus on mid. I think he looked amazing at TI, unfortunately, <laughs> the team just didn't. Yep. Uh, but overall, RNG definitely having a good shot here. And to me, anything over last place for Ehome is a surprise, and I think they should be proud if they get top three. 
uh, I think an interview with one of the players, I believe it was Zeal, uh, was said the team's goal is top two, which mm-hmm. I think would be a major accomplishment. But, you know, I was super wrong about, Gladi- about Gladiator, so who knows? Maybe Ehome catch their stride and do great here. Uh, but everybody's eyes is obviously on TI runner-ups, PSG LGD. Eastern Europe, we've got Team Spirit, Puck Champ, Virtus Pro, and Hellraisers. Uh, Spirit, clear favorites, I think. It goes without saying. They didn't drop a game. They won TI. They're looking like they're in great shape, which, you know, a lot of the times with previous TI champions, they kind of dropped the ball afterwards. But mm-hmm. Spirit have kept it rolling, so that's very admirable. Uh, the, they're very young and hungry players. I think they just want more glory. Uh, they want to win everything they can. Um, very respectable. Uh, Puck Champ, the big surprise in this division for me. They ended up getting second place. That's a lot of players that haven't had major accomplishments. Krilat, Young G, Malik, Astral, and Dukalis, none of them having any sort of high major placements. Um, I think none of them have played a TI ever. Uh, so again, young players, but they're starting to prove themselves. BP got third, and Hell Races, I believe, got fourth, if I'm not mistaken. What's your order? Spirit first. Spirit, are you speaking for me now? Hmm? No. Spirit I, first. I, I pick Spirit, so... Uh, Puck Champ, aka Navi. I think we'll get third though. Uh, AKA Navi. <laughs> soon to be Navi, I'm okay. sure. Soon to be something else. Yeah. Uh, I'll take VP second. I think okay. they they've gotten off to a slow start. I think they played a ton of games last year. They grinded every tournament, felt like. Yeah. And they were really consistently good. Still pretty respectable showing at TI. Obviously outshined by their. Team Spirit Brothers, even though they were beating them every other time throughout every other tournament. Uh, but I think they're going to start rounding more into shape this time. So I'll, I'll take them for second place. And potential upset on Spirit, maybe. Who knows? Okay. If you had to give a percentage of Spirit winning, what would you say? Uh, 78%. That's very high. Wow. Okay. I think I'd be more conservative and go with something like 76 myself. But yeah, that's, that's pretty low. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um... So we both. I think I, I, I kind of. I pretty much agree, right? It's like Puck Champ or VP second and Hellraiser's last. But I honestly think Hellraiser's could also. I think Hellraiser's ceiling here is second. I do think it's possible, but I don't think they can win the whole thing, realistically speaking. But they could get second. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Spirit Clear favorite here. And then finally, what we will be covering starting tomorrow, we have four NA teams that all have black on white logos. Very creative region, uh, known for their innovative. Nature and Dota. Uh, I mean, the t- of stuff. to be fair, Undying used to be green. Yeah, their TSM. So now with all the money, that's fair. Going with the black that's and white how it is. Again. Then you just com- compromise with your identity. It's um, true. That's fine. So top four here: Quincy Crew, TSM, EG, Zoomers. Was the order that the teams placed? What do you think? I think Zoomers will be fourth, no matter what. Okay. Although I do like their roster. I think they have promise. Mm-hmm. But maybe not yet. Uh, the other three are genuinely a toss up for me. Yeah. Uh, this is why this is like a tougher region to call than any other, probably. Uh, I think I'm going to go with TSM, EG, Quincy Crew. Wow, well, I was going to actually, <clears throat> I kind of feel like, I kind of feel the same way. You're going to copy me with all but three. Maybe regions, even bro. EG first, actually. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It could be any. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if Quincy Crew wins. I would be super happy uh, for Quincy. I have <laughs> both both Quinn and Kezo. I really like in that team. Obviously, Kezo I used to play with. He's a great guy. So I wish him all the success. But I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm feeling them right now uh, to win the whole thing. I think top two for any of these teams is a good placement mm-hmm. um, because, like you said, it's so close. That there's no clear favorite. So getting second is. Is respectable. If you're these three teams, you just don't want to get third, right? That's basically it. Um, and if my math is correct, one of them has to get third. <clears throat> right. So or, the way that I'm looking both. at it, I think TSM lost to Quincy Crew. I, mm-hmm. I genuinely think TSM's a better team right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just fucked up real bad. And I don't. I think if they play Quincy Crew, they will win. Right. I see that like 100%. So it's really up to the first series because they're going to play against EG, yeah. which EG did get 2-0 last time. So it could be... You know, that thing we've seen so many times where they learn from their mistakes and they end up owning them. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think TSM's going to make it all the way to the grand final. I think they're not going to lose a series, actually. Uh, I but believe, I don't remember if anyway. it was on his stream or in an interview. I think it was just on his stream. Crit was talking about how, for him, this major replacement is not very motivating. And he's mm-hmm. not, 
enjoying Dota so much right now. It's a little bit more of a grindy job, more than the the fun exploration that it has been in the past. I think he largely attributes that to cancelled lands in addition to a very, very long patch. So I don't want to read too much into that, but it's possible that the team isn't at its highest like motivational peak as if they were preparing for Why a Why aren't they going to be at the Dubai tournament, though? Um, Surely they were asked. That's a good Surely question. Surely they were invited. That is a good question. Also, who's playing three? That's true. I actually forgot about that. Mojo Mojo said that he was looking for a team and he appreciated the chance for EG to play as a stand-in and he was happy with the games. Mm -hmm. um, Nightfall is still officially on the roster. EG haven't announced who's playing here. Yeah. If it is Nightfall playing remotely on bad ping, that could influence things. Um, Even if he's playing on good ping. The team didn't dynamic look, didn't, didn't look, look that good. So maybe they've ironed it out or maybe Mojo's just standing it again. Who knows? Um, or maybe they call up Fata. To, to show up and help them <laughs> in, the, in the darkest hour. He can play off. If I had to guess, I would say it's MSS still playing. I think playing, MSS is still playing. But yeah. who, who knows? MSS being Mojo. Sorry about that. Stands for Mojo Stormstout. That's right. Which is one of the name of the pandas in Warcraft 3 lore. I miss the pandas. Yeah. Panda Express, because they don't have it in <laughs> Europe. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we only have really you, good sushi instead. Did you choose but, a team? Uh, to win? Yeah. I said you kind of did wishy washy bullshit. You, you know what? If I if you put me on the spot, I'll agree with you. I think the second Again. most li the second most likely team to win is EG though, not Quincy. But that's so, also what you said, right? You had EG. It, 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 yeah. So we agreed on every. So basically, did we agree on everything? Literally everything. Wow. Every order of all three regions. All right. Congrats, Zoomers, on the fifty k and two fifty <laughs> points. <laughs> yeah. Every, wow. Where you Imagine if four Zoomers wins. That would be. I'll be stoked I'm, for them. And I'm I would rooting be so for, happy yeah, to be of wrong. Of course. But. Of course. I mean, um, they have they have a lot of promise, like I said, but yeah. we'll have to see. All right, okay. that was a lot of predictions. We're That's right. We're nearing the end of the episode. This is actually not that long of an episode, Shannon. Good job. It's like when we're in person, we can do like... Are you sure? How long has it been? Less than an hour, I think. Let me check. 46 minutes. Wow. So when we sit next to each other, we can kind of, you know, like give physical cues to shut the fuck up. You're <laughs> so so what have I done to say shut the fuck up? You just started, looking at, started looking at your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I had to put down the zipper. <laughs> Damn it. It's actually such a hindrance. All right, uh, thank you. All right. So you wrote Lost Ark. On yeah. Here. So Lost Ark is an MMO. Mm -hmm. and Thank you for the very is... convincing delivery. <laughs> I watched about 10 seconds of this game on Twitch, and I'm like, I don't have any interest in watching or playing this game. That's but fair. That's just me, obviously. It is the second most played game in Steam history in its first 24 hours that's yep. fucking crazy there's a couple of things that lost ark i think did a really good job with here so first of all keep in mind this game has been out in korea for i want to say two or three years oh it's been years yeah it's oh it, i didn't know that i, I believe so unless i totally misunderstood but okay it has definitely okay however long it is it has been out in korea for a while uh, and has been a success over there so Obviously, that has built some hype around it. But what, has, what Lost Ark did a really good job with, however much money they paid or however much they got streamers interested in this, the launch of this had some absolutely enormous streams. Like Asmongold's stream had a quarter million viewers watching his first stream of Lost Ark while he was downloading it from Steam. There were a quarter million people looking at the fucking graph of him downloading this game. Wow. It was unbelievable. So it was like it coincided or coincided, however you want to look at it, with his return to streaming, which he has been away from streaming on his mainstream for a long time. And obviously he's one of the absolute biggest streamers on Twitch. So Lost Ark got to be part of his return stream, uh, especially OTK. The org has had multiple of their streamers play it for a huge audience. Uh, it's done a really good job of spreading to an international audience. There's like big Spanish streams on it, for example, which is a really, really... I think we as the Western or the American or English speaking audience really underestimate how big Spain is on Twitch. Like there's some enormous uh, Spanish streams, Brazilian, Portuguese, uh, South America in general have some some really, really big names on here. And they were also in on the Lost Ark train. So enormous viewerships. And of course, the biggest thing of them all free to play. Right. It's an MMO that's free to play. There's plenty of those, but you combine all of those factors together because obviously there's like I believe there's some pay to win or pay to pay for convenience elements in the game. I haven't played it myself. I might. Um, well, I was going to ask you, what does this game interest you? Yeah, it does. You've been it, really it looks into like fun. WoW. It looks like fun. So uh, why wouldn't you have tried it already? It's just a matter of you know I have other things I'm playing right now. If I if I was bored and had 
and was looking for a game, I 100% have tried this already, but I was, there's was just other things, and I was going to go here, right? I actually thought about downloading it while I was here, but I haven't done that yet. Um, but yeah, absolutely amazing uh, for Lost Ark, the first week that it's been out now almost, okay. and it, it is slightly slowing down on Twitch, but compared to, there's been a lot of these other games that have a huge launch on Twitch, and then they just fall off a cliff after four days. Like, mm -hmm. I think the new Pokemon game, Pokemon Arceus, had... An insane launch day as well, and Fall then guys fell off. Huge. Yeah, a lot of the like Fall Guys <laughs> among us had like their their few days in the sun when the viewership started dwindling pretty quickly. Uh, Lost Ark so far has been keeping up pretty damn well. Like, just to use Asmongold as an example, he still has these streams with over 150k uh, viewers uh, even after multiple days of streaming a new game. A lot of the time, the hype dies down. Uh, oh yeah, another thing they did a good job with it was Twitch integration, right? Which I think a lot of people are underestimating as well. The and like drops and there's stuff, drops right? there's yeah. drops sure. and um i think if you're a game developer right now that is aiming to target twitch as a way of marketing and promoting your game making drops is a huge selling point and it seems like a very successful strategy and obviously it's a great way to get the streamers on board because you're like hey guys we have drops do you want to come stream our game and you're like you can basically guarantee them a higher viewer retention because yeah people are going to stick around i believe in order to get a chest drop in lost ark you need to watch the stream for four hours so that's obviously something that the the game uh, game studio can just choose like how long yeah. do you need to watch in order to get the reward and that way you can make contracts with the streamers so that seems to work out really well so yeah uh the game looks like fun it's kind of a i would say it's an mmo that's a little bit in the diablo direction in terms of like hack and slash but uh it looks it looks fun i don't know how much replayability it has like how much fun it is after 100 200 300 hours compared to other games but you know the average video game nowadays, if you play it for over 100 hours, that's a massive success, right? A lot of games are just flopping right now. So if you have a good game, that's that's already a great look. It's not a... I'm sure we both agree that there's far in between actual great releases lately uh, compared True. to how we remember it from when we were younger. But that's just because we're old boomers that can't well, use Twitter. Le that's true. There were less games... Yeah, like there's way more games coming out. Then you would also think there would be more good ones. Would you? I mean, sheer amount. If you, I would say, if you gave more, each game as much love, I would then, say yeah, there's more good games coming out than back in the day. It's just that it's muddied with a bunch of garbage. I see. The ratio yeah, is fair. is worse now. The ratio. I agree with that 100. percent The ratio is definitely worse. Um, but so yeah, maybe, maybe Project Horse is going to be a real hit. Mm. Just remember, the game to end all the games. Game. Imagine that the biggest hit game ever has Jenkins as part of it. That yeah, that's, that was a mistake. Amazing, Huge mistake. Amazing. All okay. right. I think we're done. That's it. We're done. I hope the recording worked. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, you guys can catch us on another podcast tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> where we'll probably talk about the exact same things. Some of the th same things. That's right. We won't talk about Lost Ark probably. But yeah, make sure you guys uh, check out the upcoming NA major coverage, or NA regional finals as we call them. We don't call it the major now. Uh, it will be on ESL underscore. Wait, what are we calling it? The regional finals. That's what the I think official called, name is? I think is? they're called the regional finals. If I call it the major replacement. You need to put stress on major. The major The replacement. major replacement. Yeah. Do you I'm think sure. anybody will get mad? What if I call it the Gaben Invitational? Oh. That actually sounds now legit. That would be a great tournament name. All right. What's scratch. the first prize? Gaben's emote in Dota. That would be the most coveted emote. Nobody gives a shit about emotes. I think Gaben should host a tournament. You should be playing for a private island. Hey, he's probably got many of those. Okay. That's and where he... All, uh, all expenses cover trip on the yacht. I don't know. I get seasick. Yeah. Maybe not the best. You wouldn't be playing anyway. So and I don't really eat fish until today. That's all you can eat on a yacht. <laughs> but eel. Mm. Maybe we can catch some eel. Sounds delicious. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with Cinderin's great production. Uh, be sure to catch the regional finals tomorrow, which for the next few days we will be casting. And the, we next, said that. the next time we will have this episode, we will be talking about... The new patch. Looking forward to it. Can't wait for that new hero named Gaben. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. We say things that don't mean anything. Subscribe.
But thanks for listening. Yeah.